Howdy folks, so super exciting news. I just started work on my new After Effects Masterclass. If you wanna learn more about this, you can join the waiting list. There's a link in the video description. All right, on to the best effects for map animators. So first up we have repeating lines. I use these all the time to help visualize conflict in disputed territories. It's really simple to use, just make sure you have no other layers selected, double click on the repeating lines effect. This will create an entirely new shape layer with repeating lines, and then in the effect controls, you can really customize it to your heart's content, including the width of the lines, the gap, the number of copies, the length, and then once you have that in position, just make sure you attach it to your map comp anchor, and then you can draw out a map feature and simply use that as your track mat. I actually use this technique in another tutorial where I show you how to create a map like the CIA and it was a really fun method where I use these repeating lines in just the actual strokes of the borders. And it turned out really great. I'll link to that down in the video description if you wanna watch that tutorial. Blinking opacity is an incredibly useful effect when you wanna draw attention to a feature. For example, here we have our disputed area with our repeating lines. I can just drop this blinking opacity on here and now I can control this by adjusting the minimum and maximum opacities and the speed that this is gonna blink at. I find this particularly helpful when the map's not moving a lot and there's not much going on. It just adds a little something extra to keep the visuals alive and going. So After Effects actually has a handful of default map markers. So if you just search keyword map, you'll find three in particular in the elements section. You have balancing map icons, you have popping map pin, and you have simple map marker. And these are all pretty great. I've used them all at least once in projects. In the bouncing map icons, there's a handful of different styles from which you can choose. They're all set up through expression, so they just bounce and you can customize them to your heart's content. And the simple map marker as well, I use this quite often because I really like the really clean look of this. You can control the stroke width and offset, the colors, the speed of the loop. I'll use it in label templates. Go check these out. So Radio Waves is a really dynamic effect and you can customize it quite a lot. Think of it like this simple map marker effect, but with a ton of extra parameters and customizations. You can use it to visualize things like areas under attack, or maybe even earthquakes, radar pings, and it looks really good when you use a country map feature as a mat, as in this example. You can even attach these to path animations. It's got a little producer point here, and if you simply parent this to the position of a null object, it will move around your map. But beware, if you're trying to do this in a 3D environment, it can get really confusing really fast. I actually did a deep dive on radio waves. If you want to check the link in the video description, and I made a handful of animation presets, which are available on my Patreon page. I'll link to that as well. I love the grid of crosses effect. I use it all of the time to just add a little extra detail to my maps. You can expand out the number of copies and these are shape layers. So if you're zooming into your map, it'll be super sharp because these are in fact vectors. And if you increase the size of the crosses, you can actually create a grid. Sometimes I'll even layer these up. Like for example, I will just create some duplicates and then move one in Z space so that when I'm animating my maps in 3D, I get some nice parallax as I'm flying around. Composition border is deceptively simple, but it is extremely useful and it's a great way to just frame up your map. This is basically an inner stroke for your composition and it will automatically fit the size and aspect ratio of your composition even if you manually change it. So for example, if you have a 16 by nine comp and you manually go in there and switch it to a nine by 16 vertical aspect ratio, that border will automatically follow along. You don't have to do anything. And since this is an inner stroke, these pixel values are exact. So you can create a really dynamic frame here with the exact number of pixels that you want. And with this offset parameter, you can layer this up to create some pretty cool looks. Again, I have a standalone tutorial on this as well. Link in the description. There are so many times when I'm creating map infographics and explainers that I need to have a really dynamic text that animates with bar graphs or other elements. And this almost always requires a pretty time consuming rig where I have to set up the text, make sure it's formatted properly, and throw in a couple of expressions. Well, After Effects has recently added these new counter presets that are pretty much dummy proof. You simply double click and then adjust the parameters as you wish. These are even mono spaced, which a lot of people forget when they're creating dynamic text. That essentially means your text is not gonna wiggle around as it animates. For real, if you're working with a lot of text, you should take a closer look at these. It'll probably save you a ton of time. 
Next up is the ever popular Sabre from Video Copilot. Now if you've never heard of this one, you're probably living under a rock. This one isn't native to After Effects, but if you want to get it, just Google Video Copilot and Sabre and you'll be sure to find it. This provides a bunch of different presets that allow you to do like energy effects. And the two main things I like to use it for is to create glowing borders or borders on fire. It has a ton of customization options. Sometimes there are too many options in my opinion. But once you get the hang of it, this is a really powerful tool and you'll probably find yourself using it on all of your projects. Go check it out. Another absolute essential plugin you need from Video Copilot is Orb, which allows you to create 3D spheres and planets. Once again, all you need to do is Google Video Copilot and Orb and you'll be sure to find this. And there's actually a template project inside of GeoLayers that uses Orb, which is going to allow you to harness the power of GeoLayers in a globe format. If you want to access this, go up to the GeoLayers menu and click on Projects, scroll down and then you'll find the template project right here. Just be aware that this particular template project was only designed for a specific zoom level, which is basically to a country level. You really shouldn't be zooming in further than that because the resolution just isn't there, unfortunately. Similar to blinking opacity, there's another effect called flickering opacity. And there's actually two versions. You have at layer in and at layer out. And that's because these are transition effects. Here you can control the final opacity level as well as the duration of the actual transition animation. So again, the benefit of these is that no matter where you trim the layer in and out points, those flickering transitions will stick to those points. There's another group of effects that I like to use. They're not quite transitions. They're listed under the behaviors folder, but they are trim paths at layer in and at layer out. So I work with a lot of paths when I'm creating map animations and going through the steps of adding a trim paths and then keyframing the end from zero to 100 or 100 to zero for the in and out can be a little bit too time consuming. So these are really great if you just really quickly want to animate some path animations. You can just slap these on and you're good to go. You can control the duration, and if you want to have a path quickly animate in and out, you can simply reverse the path direction on your trim out so that your path is not trimming back the way it came. It'll just look more fluid. Now these are set up via expressions and not keyframes, so adding ease is a little bit complicated. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to learn more about map animations, check out my premium courses that are linked in the video description. And once again, I have a new Adobe After Effects course coming out soon. It's a masterclass on motion graphics and how to get started with Adobe After Effects not using any third-party plugins. It's going to be really great. I'm super excited. So go check out the link to the waiting list. See you next time.